Welcome in, YouTube, for Steam's Next Fest. It's seven days, hundreds of demos, and oodles of live streams. If you happen to miss this one, don't worry, they tend to do this quarterly. These are all early access games to think about, download, and try out. I focus mostly on the strategy category, but there are many different categories to choose from. I was very picky this year as I saw that there were some categories that Last year I had tried out and they really weren't my cup of tea. But as you can see, there's simulation, adventure, action, puzzle. There's tons of different categories to choose from. I decided to go with what I considered my top five picks. And I'm gonna have to say that out of all five, there were some winners and there were some not so great games. If there's one that you think we should all download or a demo I happen to miss, please leave that in the comments below. On to our list. Coming in at number five is Dark Envoy. Dark Envoy is a role playing game where you, it's really nice that you can make the character creation is pretty decent, but I prefer games um, like Divinity Original Sin 2, Baldur's Gate. I prefer turn based. And they tried to say it was turn based, but it really wasn't. It's more like real time. So we'll be checking this one out and uh, taking a look at what it has has to offer. Character creation in this game is pretty decent. Uh, you get to choose from a variety of colors as well as hairstyles, uh, eye color, makeup. I was kind of impressed with it at first, and then I once the game loaded in, and I saw the game. The music was good, the storyline was kind of lining up well, and then once the once I actually started getting into the game and playing, uh, that's when things kind of changed for me. And then you also get to choose your class. There's a warrior, a ranger, engineer, adept. You get to choose attributes as well as equipment and summary, and then you load into the game. I did like that they did kind of a fantasy mix with what felt like steampunk. I was really excited until until I started uh, seeing some of the gameplay, and that's 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 where I lost my interest quick. In the game, you're allowed to even go solo or go um, multiplayer, so you can play with your friends. But I just for some reason sure. like the story seemed okay. There they are. But the combat just seemed kind of boring. If that makes sense. And I found that a bit frustrating. You could change like tactical mode to slow mode to just pause, but it just, I just didn't find it very fulfilling. And the graphics are terrible. It just didn't capture my interest like these types of games normally. Right. Now. As you can see, you can easily tie to do things correctly. So we'll just be moving on from here. Coming in at our number four spot is Sons of Valhalla. I tried five different demos and I just wanted to rate them in, in my enjoyment. This is like a strategy scroll game, which is a bit interesting, and it's also published by uh, Dark Horse. It's made a lot of games I like. You can choose your different difficulties to start with. Hello, brother. And there's it's a little a bit of RPG element to it, which I like. I hear you're doing well in Father's footsteps. I'm sorry I left in such a hurry after Father's burial, but I had to look for her. I had to save her because it is my fault. I wasn't there, and I couldn't protect her. I dream of her often. Bad dreams. I see her before me. I see our village in flames and Valgar taking her away. Fisherman told me he left for England, and that he took many slaves with him. She must be among them. I just feel that she is still alive. Brother, we leave today. You won't hear from me for a while. I will find Valgard. He will pay for what he did to father and the people of our village. He will pay for every life he took with pain and suffering. 
I promise you. Thorold. Thorold, wake up. So we're given these uh, runes to add to our belts that give us buffs. And every time that we die, uh, we have to use one of those runes to resurrect ourselves. Basically, you're going to start out here. You have F for firing an arrow, which you got to angle. That re that uh, re responds basically. So we have another one of these. You want to put this rune. All the rune runes do different things on your belt. So while being in your fortress, you will automatically be healed. So that's that's pretty good. I'm not much of a side scroller, but I like this. Has a bit of a tower defense to it, and you also have to like kind of build up your little town to get it ready. Supplies come periodically. Enter your meat hall. This is where you can get... You can upgrade it so duration of things are better. You restock your supplies, which let you heal. I made that mistake early game. And then basically you want to build one of these. You want to build a barracks. And then as you can see that you have your supplies, you have stone, gold, wood, uh, food, and men. And we enter the barracks. It's good to have a couple of shield men. They take a little bit longer to build. Nothing to repair. Okay, and then you have a gate. And then basically what you see down here is you have to scroll your way along to take up different defenses and eventually leads you to a boss. It's quite difficult to start with early so you want to make sure that you don't advance yourself too far he has a couple of different abilities uh, like I said there's the bow the shields and you can use hit Q to tell your men what you want to do follow you retreat attack so we're gonna tell them to follow us and I still haven't figured out the shield wall I don't know what's going on with the whole follow position me. and basically you just want to keep going forward you have to pay attention to your stamina. And uh, this beginning part is really tough. And you can kind of aim your shield. Like, what they attack is, is, is brutal. We want to go attack. Attack! Hit eat, eat food to, um... To survive. I'll try to put away the shields and men. Basically, you gotta break their tower, take their tower, and you can keep pushing forward. We'll have them keep attacking. Then you push forward and you try to take places over. To take over a spot, you basically got to stand here. But clear the enemies and then you stand and you take the flag. And then as you progress, you get more and more stuff that you can use. It's better to take them out and trying to keep this intact. And as you can see that we're taking over this territory. There's not much to this game, but... I found it kind of um, addictive. As you keep playing and pushing, you can keep getting more items. We gotta wait until we completely take this over and then we have access to all of this. Well done. You've taken our first outpost. Outposts offer useful functions, such as trading resources or buying mercenaries. Stand by the flag to enter the outpost. If you want to rebuild destroyed towers or gates, Simply walk to the position of the destroyed building. The tutorial lets you get in really quick to the game, which is nice. Whoop. I'm, like, 
like here, we can repair it, which is good. But you have to pay attention to like how close you are to stuff because it can cause problems. If you go too far, like every time we go, uh, we have to go back to our main base. Like we will tell them to stay here. Retreat! Because they keep charging until you clear an area. And you keep adding parts of the belt that can give you buffs to your buildings, to your men, to yourself, and so forth. Or you can stand there and just die. So, there's a lot going on with this game. It feels like a bit of, like, it has a bit of strategy to it. It has a bit of power defense. And I actually, for ah, so we meet again, the game the way it is... I actually found it one more chance, rather fun. You'll have to sacrifice so. one of your runes for it. Choose wisely. So I definitely think this is one checking out, adding to your wish list, and giving it a go. This was a game that almost uh, flew off my radar. I wasn't sure about it at first, but I came across an article from PC Gamer to give it a try. So here we are. Looks like you get to choose an art. You get to choose an area of land, and if you look in the realm information, it tells you if it's medium, large, and then you can be a princess or a prince, and then you can choose who you want to prince, a princess, prince already. And so, uh, yeah, we're just gonna dive right in. And see you what this game is picked about. my favorite. <laughs> Once upon a time, it goes. A story told of love and woes When all the kings and queens of yore Sent forth their children to explore Be kind, be cruel, be scrappy And make your ever after happy All right we got our movement, WASD, uh, scroll, zoom in, zoom out, rotate candle by clicking mouse button. I already like that. Oh, looks like we claimed some money. Where were we? Oh, yes. Our kingdom began with little more than a humble laborer's hut. Now, where did that go again? Hmm. Let's see here. Yeah. The construction menu. Okay, laborer's hut. Usually with any city builder, we're going to need this. Set it down close by. Or put the place. R to rotate. Good. Workplace requires fablings to operate. You can assign fablings by clicking any of the available slots or by clicking manage worker. Okay. Tutorial seems kind of straightforward, which is good. So we can assign two. Get this. We're probably going to need wood to build houses. Oh, we've already used up our money. Dang. Okay. A homestead. Uh, so we need homes. Residence three. Okay, cool. Well, that's good. Some buildings use foundations and attachments after placing the homestead. Hold and drag. Place the foundation attachments are placed automatically by default. Where you can disable them. Okay. That looks cute. But cost money to build, and now we need people to chop wood. So let's see how we do that. We've got basics, food production down here, resource production, 
It looks like we're going to have to put a lumber camp down in order to get wood. We'll put one there. And that looks like it's an area effect. Okay. And then we need a well. The middle is only affect a specific area indicated by a blue shape. Make sure the affected areas are inside the area. Okay. So we want to make sure the well's like here. We're going to want to build more houses, so we'll make the center. Upkeep. Some buildings require upkeep to stay in good condition. See when the next payment is due. Hover. Oh, wow. Payment. Oh, my. Okay. Welcome the new favorites. Okay. So we're going to build a well. Once this is done, I think we can assign individuals to it. Okay. So we have... All right, that's good to know. So far, this game is uh, pretty cute. I'm not gonna lie. I like the idea of a story. The graphics don't look so bad. Ah, finally, here come our first newcomers. As long as you keep your population happy, more will want to join. So we got yeah, our money up here, our population, room, our happiness. Welcome, kind of straightforward welcome. with our resources, too. Which is good. And I guess we got to keep track of money because everything's going to cost money. So that's going to make for an interesting uh, interaction. See if I can see what this looks like going a little bit more into this game, but I don't want this video to go on too long before I rate it. I have to say, overall, I'd have to rate this as three out of the five games. It, I find it very relaxing. Um, every time you reach a milestone and you go up, you get rewarded with new buildings that you can build. As you can see, I'm in the winter here. There's more stuff you can do. It's just a very like relaxing building game. Sometimes with building games, you just feel like you're stressed out. Like there's a million things you have to manage, but this one feels very compact. The graphics are really cute. And, and a big win for me is all the decorations. On to our next video. One game coming in hot for me, uh, definitely at the number two spot is Dark and Darker. Dark and Darker is like an adventure first person uh, some some would put it in a first person shooter category, but obviously it's not. It's competitive. It's PvP. It feels like you're playing Skyrim, but you're always in a dungeon and you have an opportunity to play with friends. There's six currently six categories to choose from: the fighter, the barbarian, the rogue, the ranger, the wizard, and the cleric. I actually went with the cleric to start with. I found the cleric to be pretty potent in its ability to like um, do combat as well as heal. It's a very good support unit. So what you have in this game is that you load in with your friends here, or you can go individual. There's different types of dungeon maps. If you want to go solo, you can go here. If you want to go for high roller, if you can make a lot of gold. Uh, I haven't checked this one out, but I plan to. You have the leaderboards, your class, perk skills spells and each of these are going to be different for each of the classes your stash which you want to really make sure that if you do go in you take things off every time you go in uh, merchants that you can sell things to you can select a channel gathering hall Cus customize i think this will probably be coming in a little bit later uh, and there's also like a shop that they're obviously going to implement at some point so as you as you adventure and you actually get out you can make it pretty good what you're gonna do is you're gonna load in and then there's like a quick opportunity to see uh, what other players you'll be up against and you can go into teams of threes. So like here, if you see someone with a lot of potions fully kitted out, it's probably gonna go not so fair in your corner. When you do get in, uh, you can play with, like I said, friends or solo and you're gonna have an opportunity to kind of wander around the dungeon. You're gonna wanna loot and have the opportunity to possibly have PvP. As a solo pe player, I think it's far better to just kind of stay on the edge and as people say, rat it out. You kit yourself up, you go in, you loot, and as you can see, I'll show you a little bit of what the gameplay looks like. Hopefully I don't die right away. Ooh, a potion. 
Hey. And as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, I'm on the edge. As the timer decreases, this red thing will fill and it can kill you. So you have to work your way to the center to find a portal to escape. idea. But as far as a, a dungeon crawler with friends, this is definitely on my top of my list at number two. Coming at, coming in at my number one spot is Darkest Dungeon 2. The demo came out on Steam Next Fest, and if you missed it, that's okay. It's in early access right now over at Epic, and only should be available on Steam once it's fully Ruined. released has found you at last. My protege. My friend. Our calculations were correct. The ephemeral equation is unbalanced. The Earth spins on a strange and terrifying new axis. And everywhere, unbridled consequence. The world is a wasteland of failures past. And yet, you must ride out into it, unafraid. Take this. It is hope, the very last of it. It is yours now. You were bold once. Be bold once more. Free yourself from this suffocating stillness. Fix your gaze on the horizon and face the fearsome truth of the darkest dungeon. Very Cthulhu-like, that's what I love about this game. Who will step forward into the light? You have to select the area. And of course you load out the Pride. you want your group More to be. More devastating than the horrors of a hundred campaigns. The graphics are a little bit different this time, but they they keep a lot of the same charm that they had before. When you are ready, this rutted roadway will finally take you home. So your heroes now have goals, they get specific goals, they get um, rewards from it, as well as it gives you light. As you continue down this path, this is you gain more light. If your light totally distinguishes, out you lose. Here you'll see uh, we have a map, and then we're going to eventually make our way to the end. Once you're at the end, it's the only time you can rest that I've come across so far. I think there might be an opportunity to find a campfire, you can find supplies. It is very much like RNG. Here you have your character portraits down here, your inventory, and then you also have your stagecoach, which you can add items, but you can only add these items at ends. So it goes for a little bit more complication. <laughs> you also want to try to like, uh, steering the wagon can be a bit difficult. It's very sensitive and you have to steer the wagon yourself and you're using your ASDW keys for movement. But so far, I I played uh, through the demo twice. This is now my third time just showing you what it looks like. You'll have opportunities where you meet individuals and you get to make choices. This time, you'll see that they each say something different and then you have to choose which one you wanna go along with. Hope is a contagious once it catches. Uh, we could go, we light the way for more than just merely us. And then you had just the whole left click down. And this An influences people in your party. Find. 
So we got additional flame because of this encounter. We're also gonna get some food, uh, but you can only use the food at the end. I'm hoping they're gonna adjust this a little bit because I had some comments where I was like, I'm not gonna make it to the end. It's just not gonna happen. And then you also have random encounters and you'll have choices on the map where you can split the direction that you go. The Hoarder has items that you can buy. I highly suggest that if there's anything you can buy for your wagon that you do that. Plus 20 traveling hill. Oh, that looks good. Location scouting. I don't even care about that. Let's get this. Uh, there's some nasty nasty things that you're going to come across where there's there's like fire now. There's some enemies that the dots that they put on you are quite extensive. So if you have an opportunity to spend your money, 100% do it. Don't 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 hold on to your money if you can early game. Because otherwise they're not going to make it. This is letting you know that you can equip things. That's what the red is on. Now you have to equip it. You can't just pull it from your inventory when you're in a fight. So here it's like, okay, I really don't want my healer to not have an opportunity. And this is, this can only be equipped at any stage quote stuff can only be equipped at an actual end. So that's all we can do with them. Now if we look at our map, we can see where we're at. The old bridge. I think that's one of the... It's getting close to the end. I think it's kind of best to try to stay center. That way when you see items, objects coming up, you have an opportunity to go over them. Because I believe you gain money. The bulwark of your denial is giving way. As you see, the graphics have changed a little bit. You can still see where, uh, what your damage and different abilities and what they can do. But I, I like the updated graphics, the way that they, they have a little bit of movement to them. I'm gonna get that buff. I'm gonna try and take out a unit like straight away. with gas and as you can see the symbols have changed a little bit they added a little bit of color to them the work continues easy this is like your first encounter before you go to the bridge but it gets past is way gone. tougher after this let it die and when there's opportunity to shaken? equip them there is right so click much to bring it up in store. so we have a polis pulsis this is a trinket which is awesome so we're going to put that on him. Okay, we got something from that. Not really sure what it does going through the piles. So it's at 64 right here, right? I made it to the end. 
This is your only opportunity to rest that I've seen so far. Which makes it a lot tougher than the original game, in my opinion. The place is a little worse for wear, but familiar nonetheless. It's the only place that you're, you can eat your food. Okay, so end expedition, the provision. Okay, so we can put- Planning and mindfulness. This gives us an opportunity to, to put something on our- sharp and steel. Stagecoach, which gives us 20% heal, traveling heal. The means of mastery. I'm not sure what exactly the mastery does. I'm, I'm guessing it makes things a little bit better. So right now we'll take a look at this and then we'll see what what happens. 2x, 2x. So now it's targets 3x. Wicked Slice. We can see that the, that, what was it? The crit and ignores went up a little bit. Rain, fire, and rot. Is there no sanctuary from this madness? So the demo was pretty extensive. It gave us a choice Spend to choose one can, of the others. This one was really no tough. longer has meaning. So that is if probably the one we'll do. indeed it ever did. I'm still kind of learning the interactions. Okay, so we did all of that. We know which route we're going to choose the second once we second it gets it. Every started. league, a lesson. And things are different now. There's different types of currency. So you earn, you need the baubles. You sell baubles to get trinkets. Mastery is something you can earn. Relics. So you sell like different loot and stuff to get other items. So right now we don't have enough to get a buff. There are certain things you can buy that basically help you, like a soothing poultice, for instance, you could have bought that and then you target one of them while you're resting and then they get a 25% resistance towards that until you get to the next end. So that's helpful. We'll go the thick one. The farms and fields of our kingdom overrun with putrescence and rot. So if you look at food now, instead, what it does now is it takes, it can give them 10% max health. So they get a buff till the next end. It's different than before. That's it for Steam Next Fest. I hope you enjoy this video and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you around.